My husband missed our daughter's birth after after ignoring 16 calls and now he wants Maine to cut off my brother for punishing him. The whole thing started when he casually suggested that we get a paternity test for our daughter once she arrived. To be clear, this accusation was completely out of the blue with no prior incidents or reasons to justify his suspicion. I am a homebody who works remotely, with no close male friends apart from my brother. I don't go out much, and my interactions with other men are virtually non-existent. When he first brought it up, I was taken aback and deeply hurt. I couldn't believe that he would question my fidelity, especially so close to my due date. I told him that he was essentially accusing me of cheating on him, which was not only unfounded but also incredibly insulting. Instead of understanding my point of view or apologizing, he doubled down on his request, claiming that he just wanted to be sure. This became a recurring topic over the next three days. Every time he brought it up, the stress of the accusation started to weigh heavily on me. I felt physically ill from the constant tension. I tried to reason with him, explaining how his unfounded doubts were affecting me, but he wouldn't relent. It felt like he was tearing down the trust and love we had built over the years, brick by brick. But on the third day, after another exhausting round of the same argument, I reached my breaking point. I was overwhelmed with frustration and sadness. The stress was so intense that I could feel it taking a toll on my body and my mental health. In a moment of clarity, I realized that I couldn't continue to stay in an environment that was so toxic and harmful especially not so close to giving birth. I told him that I didn't want to talk to him anymore and packed a few essentials. I left our home and went to my brother's house, seeking solace and support. My brother welcomed me with open arms, offering the comfort and understanding that I desperately needed. During this time, I called my husband to try and work things out, hoping for some resolution, but he refused to engage in a constructive conversation. After all this, I decided to go back home the next day to grab some things while my husband was at work. The atmosphere at my brother's house was supportive, but I needed some personal items and baby essentials to prepare for the upcoming birth. As I walked through our home, the memories of our recent fight lingered, adding a heavy sense of sadness and frustration. While I was gathering my belongings, I suddenly felt a sharp, intense pain in my abdomen. The realization hit me I was going into labor. Panic set in as the contractions grew stronger and more frequent. I needed to get to the hospital immediately. My first instinct was to call my husband, despite our unresolved issues. After all, he was the father of our child and deserved to be there for the birth. I dialed his number, but there was no answer. I called again and again, a total of 16 times, with each attempt going straight to voicemail. My heart pounded with anxiety and fear. How could he not answer? Didn't he see the urgency in my repeated calls? Each ring that went unanswered only heightened my sense of isolation and dread. Desperate and in pain, I called my brother, explaining the situation between labored breaths, so he assured me that he was on his way and tried to reach my husband as well. My brother called him another half a dozen times while driving to the pick-me-up and then continued calling on the way to the hospital, but there was still no response. The silence from my husband was deafening, amplifying my fears and frustrations. As my contractions became more intense, I clung to the hope that my husband would somehow show up. The ride to the hospital felt interminable, each bump in the road sending waves of pain through my body. So my brother, trying to remain calm for my sake, drove as quickly and safely as he could. His wife, a nurse, was on the phone, guiding us through the process and preparing to meet us at the hospital. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, I felt an overwhelming urge to push. We were still miles from the hospital and it became clear that I wouldn't make it in time. My brother pulled over and his wife instructed him over the phone on what to do. When the cramped space of the back seat, I gave birth to my daughter. The pain was excruciating and the situation was terrifying. I was bleeding heavily and my brother's wife, who arrived just in time, helped deliver the baby and tried to manage the situation as best as she could. So by the time we reached the hospital, I was in critical condition. I was rushed into surgery to stop the bleeding and had to undergo an emergency hysterectomy. Bonding with my daughter has been incredibly hard. Each time I look at her, I feel a mixture of overwhelming love and deep sadness. She is beautiful and innocent, a light in the start period, but I can't shake the lingering pain and trauma from her birth. Holding her, I feel the pressure to be strong and joyful, yet the memories of the emergency and the surgery keep pulling me back into a state of sorrow and exhaustion. A brother's wife has been an immense support during this time. Her medical knowledge and calm demeanor have been invaluable, but even she knows that this emotional healing will take time. The point is that while I was still groggy and recovering from surgery 10 hours after I had first called, my husband finally responded. I was just beginning to come around disoriented and in pain trying to make sense of everything that had happened. So the nurses were bustling around checking on me and the baby and I could barely keep my eyes open. And her brother had been by my side the entire time, his face etched with worry and exhaustion. He had my phone, handling all the calls and updates to family and friends. When my husband finally called back, my brother's face contorted with a mix of relief and anger. He couldn't believe it had taken my husband so long to respond, especially given the urgency of the situation. As he answered the phone, I could see the anger and frustration boiling over. My husband's voice came through asking why I hadn't answered his calls. The sheer audacity of his question, after hours of silence during the most critical moment of my life, 
was too much for my brother to bear. This is Jake, he said, his voice shaking with controlled fury. I'm at the hospital. She didn't make it. Without waiting for a response, he turned off the phone, his hands trembling. My husband rushed to the hospital, arriving just as I was starting to wake up. So the look on his face was a mix of panic, guilt, and desperation. He stormed into my room, his voice rising in anger and confusion. So why didn't you answer my calls? What's going on? He shouted, his eyes wild. Before I could even process what was happening, the hospital security intervened, forcing him out of the room to prevent further distress to me. I was too weak and disoriented to fully grasp the situation, but the emotional turmoil was evident. The hospital staff explained that they needed my signature to allow him back in. But I was in and out of consciousness, barely able to focus on anything. And my brother's actions, though harsh, were driven by the intense fear and helplessness he had felt during those long hours. He had watched me struggle through labor, bleeding and in pain, all while my husband was unreachable. To him, those 10 minutes of fear he inflicted on my husband were a fraction of what he had endured. My sister-in-law thinks it was horribly cruel of my brother to tell my husband that I didn't make it but she also believes that my husband deserved a taste of the fear and helplessness we all felt. She understands the emotional roller coaster we went through and while she wouldn't have done it herself, she doesn't completely condemn my brother's reaction. So my brother, on the other hand, stands firmly by his prank. He justifies it by saying that he only gave my husband 10 minutes of the same fear he had felt at my side for over 10 hours. He had witnessed firsthand the agony and danger I was in while my husband was unreachable. Whenever he sees my husband now, he doesn't hesitate to remind him that I nearly died because we waited for him. He's relentless in driving home the point, hoping it will instill some sense of the gravity of the situation. Before all this, my brother was mostly indifferent to my husband. They were cordial but not particularly close. Now the animosity is palpable. My brother absolutely hates him, and you can see it in his face whenever my husband enters the room. The once-neutral expressions are now replaced with a deep, seething resentment. Since the birth, my brother has been visiting a lot. He doesn't trust my husband to care for me properly while I'm still healing. He makes sure that I have everything I need and helps with the baby, ensuring that I am supported during this vulnerable time. His protective nature has intensified, and he seems determined to be there for me in every way possible. My husband, on the other hand, is furious. He's outraged that my brother won't apologize for the prank and that I won't make him. He believes that I should force my brother to apologize, viewing it as a matter of principle. When I told him that the only reason my brother had my phone was because he wasn't there, he exploded in anger. He yelled at me, his frustration and guilt manifesting his rage. I'm trying to be empathetic, to understand that my husband feels guilty about everything that happened. I know he's struggling with his own emotions, but his reactions make it difficult to bridge the gap between us. I've spoken to my therapist, who has suggested that the apathy I'm feeling is likely general and not solely focused on him. She thinks it's lingering shock from the trauma, a natural response to such a harrowing experience. However, she didn't say much about the prank itself, leaving me to navigate the emotional fallout on my own. My mother-in-law has been texting me to say that my family is horribly cruel for the prank and that I should go no contact with my brother, and now my husband is saying the same. I just don't know what to do, I'm not in a good headspace. It's been hard to be in the same room with my husband and I've been sleeping in the guest room with my daughter. He brought up the paternity once, and I just exhaustedly told him to either get out of my face or go stay with his mom if he's planning on stressing me out even more. I really don't feel myself. And yes, I am taking the likelihood of peep seriously and my therapist who has suggested that it may be P to SD too. However, I just want more opinions because I just don't know. This isn't a black and white issue. The fight you had was real, your anger was real, and the anger you feel at your husband is real. Your brother's prank was too far but not completely undeserving. The big issue is that everyone's pride is still seemingly involved here and there isn't a concrete solution when everyone is pointing fingers. I suggest waiting two months to see if either one party humbles themselves or to let it peak. But if they keep conflict going, let everyone know they're cut off. It's not fair to you to have to choose one or another party when it was you in labor and your life on the line. If it came to a choice at this moment, I feel like I'd choose my brother. He has never let me down and is the kind of older brother every sister wants. He rushed to my side when I needed help the most, driving me to the hospital and staying with me through the terrifying ordeal of childbirth. He took charge when my husband was unreachable. I feel guilty for feeling this way, torn between my loyalty to my husband and my gratitude towards my brother. Despite hating my husband right now, my brother has put his feelings aside to help me. He hasn't mentioned the prank or the incident, not wanting to add to my stress. He's even ignored my husband's anger, staying calm to avoid arguments that would stress me more. His actions come from love and concern for me, without expecting anything in return. Even so, I still feel like I'm not seeing this clearly enough. My husband is my partner and the father a child. We've built a life together, and my anger about everything is wrapped in trauma. The betrayal I felt when he suggested the paternity test, his absence during the birth, and his behavior afterward have all left deep emotional scars. My therapist mentioned that my apathy and numbness are likely from the trauma I experienced, 
not necessarily my true feelings towards my husband. The love and history I share with my husband make this decision very difficult. I'm trying to balance my anger and disappointment with the understanding that he might be feeling guilty and overwhelmed too. But every time I remember those critical moments when I needed him the most and he wasn't there, I feel betrayed and it clouds my judgment. My brother, on the other hand, has been consistently supportive. He's helped me through this challenging time, showing me what true support looks like. The contrast between his actions and my husband's is stark, and it's hard not to let that influence my feelings. Update, I don't believe this is something we can recover from. I can't imagine being able to heal alongside him, especially Sonic, because he must have known it was me calling and still hasn't explained why he ignored my call. I initially thought I wouldn't take my time to decide, but I realize now that I don't want to forget the agony of waiting for him. Convinced he wouldn't abandon me regardless of his anger. So I took the time to think back to that moment before everything went downhill. The memory is vivid and painful. So I remember the contractions hitting hard and fast, each one more intense than the last. And I was on my knees, trying to breathe through the pain, clutching my phoning as if it were lifeline. The fear and betrayal I felt were overwhelming. With each ring that went unanswered, my sense of isolation grew. I kept hoping, praying that he would pick up, that he would be there for me in this critical moment. But each time the call went to voicemail, the reality set in deeper. He wasn't coming. I felt grossly betrayed and utterly alone. This wasn't just about a missed call. It was about trust and support at the most vulnerable moment of my life. I needed him, not just as my husband, but as my partner, the father of our child. The person I thought I could rely on unconditionally was nowhere to be found when I needed him the most. The fear I felt wasn't just for myself, but for our unborn daughter as well. I was scared for her safety, scared of what might happen if I didn't get help in time. I've replayed that moment in my mind countless times, and each time, the feelings of betrayal and loneliness wash over me anew. I just don't think there's any coming back from that. It's not something that can be easily forgiven or forgotten. It's a breach of trust so deep that it shakes the very foundation of our relationship. I also think about my daughter and the kind of example I want to set for her. I wouldn't want her to think it's okay to stay with a man who destroyed her trust that way. She deserves to see what a healthy, supportive relationship looks like. Staying in a relationship where trust has been shattered would send the wrong message. I want her to grow up knowing her worth and the importance of being with someone who truly values and respects her. I plan to contact an attorney and meet with them in the coming weeks. Thankfully, we have a prenup, so I hope the process won't be too difficult. This situation became even clearer when a friend asked if I would still trust him to sign off on my medical papers. My immediate reaction was a strong no, I wouldn't trust him at all. I want to remove him from that responsibility as soon as possible. Honestly, I'd trust my old college roommates more than him. I would never have ignored so many of his calls unless I had specifically told him I was unavailable. And even then, I would have been more responsive. I feel good with my brother and sister-in-law here with me. Their presence has been a huge comfort, especially with my sister-in-law being a nurse. She was there through the birth, and her medical knowledge and calm demeanor have been invaluable during my recovery. Knowing she's just a room away if I need anything gives me a sense of security I desperately need right now. Having them here has really helped us bond in a way we never really had time to before. My sister-in-law and I have always gotten along, but this experience has brought us closer. We've spent countless hours talking, not just about the baby, but about life, our hopes, and our fears. She's been a sounding board for my anxieties and a source of practical advice, from breastfeeding tips to managing postpartum emotions. It's a deeper connection than we've ever had, and I'm grateful for it. My brother, too, has been a pillar of strength. He's taken on so many responsibilities, from running errands to helping with the baby, and even just being there to talk to. His support has been unwavering, and it's made a world of difference. He's always been my protector, but now, more than ever, I see the depth of his love and commitment to our family. I've also finally told my old friends about the baby, and their responses have been heartwarming. They were thrilled to hear the news and eager to help. They've started alternating visits to come and support me, bringing meals, helping with household chores, and giving me some much-needed breaks. Their presence has been a breath of fresh air, reminding me of the strong network of friends I have, even though we might not see each other as often as we used to. The camaraderie and support from my friends have lifted my spirit significantly. They've been sharing their own parenting experiences, offering advice, and just being there to listen. It's reassuring to know that I have a community that cares for me and my daughter ready to step in whenever I need them. This collective support has been crucial for my mental and emotional well-being. It's helping me navigate the challenges of new motherhood and the complex emotions surrounding my relationship with my husband. None of this even addresses the paternity test, but I'll get it done for the legal proceedings. So, he'll get what he wants. Anyway, I'm safe and well, and my daughter is healthy and as sweet as can be. She sleeps peacefully anywhere and nurses easily, which is such a relief given how much everything still hurts. Making this decision has lifted a weight off my shoulders and my sister-in-law has been wonderful in helping us bond. Thank you for letting me write this out. I'm not great at keeping diaries or journals, but writing to people feels different and has really helped clarify things for me. Even my therapist mentioned that I seem clearer and calmer, 
I might give a diary another try as she suggested. I will now move forward with divorcing him because I no longer trust him as a partner. Trust is fragile and foundational in any relationship. My husband's unfounded doubts and his suggestion for a paternity test not only hurt me deeply but also broke the trust we had built. When trust is compromised, the entire relationship can crumble. It's essential to be with someone who believes in you without needing constant reassurances of your loyalty and love. Enduring such a traumatic event taught me the value of emotional resilience. Despite the fear, pain, and betrayal, I had to find the strength to move forward for the sake of my daughter and myself. Life can throw unimaginable challenges your way, but you must find the inner strength to persevere and overcome them. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.